Welcome to Projectile Motion from PHET. We'll take a quick look at how the simulation works. Let's start with the intro and see what happens when we shoot the cannon. We can see the path that the projectile takes through the air. We can change the angle of the cannon and see how that affects the projectile's motion. We can also change the height of the cannon. We can change the initial speed of the shot and see. Well we can't see it because it flew off the screen. So we can zoom out and now we can see our projectile. Ok, let's erase all of that and take a look at some of the other variables. We can shoot a variety of objects including a pumpkin, piano, or even a car. Let's launch the human again and we can see how she gracefully lands on her feet. We can measure the distance that the projectile traveled by sliding the target or better yet, by using the measuring tool. This tool is the easiest and most accurate way to measure. We can even measure anywhere along the projectile's path. The tape measure has its uses but I don't use it very often. We can see the projectile in slow motion, pause it, and run it step by step. The vectors help us to understand the forces that act upon a projectile in motion. We will look more closely at vectors in the next section and at the effects of drag. That brings us to the lab which I think is the best part. In the lab we can adjust all sorts of variables including the initial speed, mass, diameter, gravity, air resistance, and so on. We can even adjust our altitude and see how that affects the motion of our projectiles. At an altitude of 1,600 meters, we find ourselves at the University of Colorado in Boulder where the very smart people who made this simulation work and go to school. You guys are awesome. Now that you have an idea of how the simulation works, you can experiment and learn about projectile motion.